Hello Georgetown. I'm Beverly Enos and this is Spotlight Georgetown. You can find us Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on your local cable TV station. If you'd like to come and join us behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, let me know and we'll make sure that that happens. Now today we're talking to Steve Flynn. And Steve Flynn, you see him, he's a familiar face because he owns Noonan. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Noonan's growing up here in Georgetown. Noonan's has been here for a long time. Correct. So when did you come into the picture? I came into the picture in 1985. Oh, so you've still, you've been here a long time. Yeah, 23 years. It'll be 24 this September. Okay. Mm. You don't live in Georgetown? Nope. You live in still in, in Haverhill? Haver in Haverhill. In Haverhill? Yeah. And what made you decide to get into this business at all? I started uh, working in a greenhouse when I was 12. There was a greenhouse, uh, I lived, grew up in Middleton, and there was a greenhouse down the street from where I lived. So I'd go there after schools and weekends. So that's how I learned the trade. Okay, and did you do any education to go along with it, or? Uh, no, I didn't. I kind of went to the school of hard knocks. I, <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from Masconomet in, in uh, Boxford and Tossfield area. And uh, I just, I enjoyed it so much. In fact, when I was a senior in high school, I, I was uh, working a 40 hour week and going to school at the same time. So oh, wow. Yeah, I work in the evenings and all, every weekend day as much, much as I could. I enjoyed it that much. And now that you own the place, you probably still work that much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, you've had Noonan's for 23 years. Yep. Is it a family business, or? It kind of is. I have a partner, Bill, who's uh, been somebody that I've been with. Uh, we worked together in the greenhouse that I grew up with, and we both decided to buy Noonan's at the same time. Uh, he has no children, but I have a, a few children, and I have plenty of brothers and sisters, so I have probably five or six family members working with me full-time right now, Okay. besides my partner, Bill. So it's kind of a family business. So. Now, people go in, and, and especially at this time of year, in the spring, you go down and you see all the, the flowers and the pansies and the plants and all the pretty colors, and we think of it as... as florist and greenhouses, but you grow all kinds of things. Yeah, we grow um, poinsettias. We grow about 20,000 poinsettias in, in those greenhouses that you see. Uh, in the springtime, we grow, we just got done with a crop of Easter lilies. We grow about 16,000 Easter lilies, 10,000 pots of tulips, another 5,000 pots of daffodils. So we grow a lot of plants in those houses. So. And you start them, they, they come as starters or seeds or? Well, we root on the poinsettias, we root our own cuttings. Uh, we, so we get little cuttings in from the west coast. And the bulb crops that we have in the springtime, we plant as bulbs in the fall in, into pots and we, we force them. And uh, pansies, we actually sow the seed ourselves and bring them right from the seed to finish. And most of the annuals that you see, we do either, we buy in cuttings or we sow seed for those. How many pe uh, people do you employ? We have uh, right around 50 now. Wow. Yeah. You don't realize there's that many people behind the scenes? No, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Because a lot of them are just out in the greenhouses all the time? Correct. Yeah. We, we do a couple off-site things. We have an interior landscape business that we run. So we have two or three people out doing that at the same time. As, uh, and we have a landscaping division that we just started. So these are other services that That, you that we provide, yeah. So landscaping as in? Planting them or maintaining yeah, them? Uh, planting, maintaining, uh, designing. Oh wow, that's yeah. that's new. That's that's a year old. So you know, we we had we started last January, so we're on our second year now. Now every time I take a look down there, there's either a new greenhouse being built or a few years ago, as you come off the street on the left hand side. You built a whole new area for all the shrubbery and, and all of that to be in. Yeah, when we bought uh, Noonan's in 1985, there was some plastic greenhouses there. And as we developed, we moved them, we built others, and we decided to put the nursery there with a nice big waterfall. So uh, we tore down the older greenhouses to build that nursery. So. And there's also on the other side, there's all the mulches. Yeah. And there's a there's a big bucket loader there, always loading trucks up, getting yeah, ready with to take mulch it out. Yeah, and everything else. Yeah. Um, what are the hot items for the spring? Now that Easter is over. Well, 
we have a, a line of what they call spring magic and we sell we sell it along with the the pansies it's uh, flowering perennials that you can mix in with the pansies like uh, four inch uh, forget-me-nots four inch uh, english daisies alyssum a pink a beautiful pink columbine and it, it's meant to put in your flower boxes in early spring and it gets you to um, late May when when the chance of frost is all over with and then you can put your regular summer annuals in afterwards yeah, because it, it until late May yeah until that um, the egg used to have uh, so many moons after Memorial Day or something yeah was was the time that you could plant without worrying about frost right you also deal with things other than just plants and flowers for people to buy there are new there are new items on the market for water conservation that you deal with yes um, we've had this uh, uh, product called soil moist which is an excellent product you mix it in with your window box soil or your potted uh, plants and it it absorbs water ten times its its volume so that that's a great water water uh, saver um, a lot of we've got some new grass seed this year which is encapsulated in this type of product which is neat so when you throw the grass seed out and you water it once the biggest thing about sowing grass seed is don't let it dry out yeah. well now that it's encapsulated in this it lasts it stays moist a lot longer it has a better chance of germinating so that's a new product that we have also and how about organic gardening well, organic gardening that's that's hot right now people you know when they used to when I would say not six years ago people used to come in and it was Scots 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 and and now I would say nine out of ten now it's probably five out of five would like Scott would want Scots and the other five want something organic either chicken manure or fish emulsion or something that they know that they're helping the environment so it's a big rage right now yeah it was a big rage when I when I had my children yeah because I had a garden in the backyard a vegetable garden and it was organic yeah. And for some reason back then it was it was the thing to do and composting and all of that and then it kind of died away. Yeah. And it's back. It's and I see because I live across the street from the town gardens, they're already out there. There are cars there every single day, yeah. some of them for four and five hours a day, getting getting everything ready and they're they're rototilling and yeah. they're they're not quite getting ready to do that yet, but they're they're cleaning up everything from last fall. How important is it to, to get everything cleaned out how fast? Oh, it's very important. <coughs> if you have any sort of fungus in the garden left over from last year, it actually will winter over any plant diseases. Anything that you're not sure of it was kind of funky in the garden, uh, if it's really unusual, throw it in a plastic bag and, or throw it in the, in the town dump. Because if you put it in the compost, the spores from that will actually make it back into your garden again. Oh, wow. So it's good if, on, on some of the strangest stuff, just normal, garden waste or leaves it's okay to compost that but if you have something going on that you haven't been able to identify don't put it in the compost because mm. it'll come back one of the the stories that so many people have have lived through if they've done any kind of composting is you know you you use the compost and then all of a sudden up pops a zucchini plant or up <laughs> pops a, a pumpkin or something else because the seeds just happen to live through the composting process yeah which and is now you've got you know pumpkins growing down the length of the garden yeah so that's always fun to, to find those. You also have the florist part. Mm -hmm. So you do a f all florist services. Yes, we do. We do weddings and uh, big functions. Uh, we do a little little bit of everything back there. And you have you have three people that you say are yeah, in the Yeah, we have three full-time designers mm -hmm. uh, and Lisa Green, who uh, runs the back room. She's the, she's the floral department manager. She is. Uh, she's got more accreditations in the floral industry. She tr actually travels around the country to uh, give uh, lectures and and talks about floral design, and and she's even had a couple of major uh, supermarket chains uh, have her come and talk to their staff about opening up, you wow. know, a line of uh, floral. Uh, floral she department. used to own her own florist. Ca correct. Here in town. Yeah, right in town. And yeah. then, uh, then moved in with you. Yes. And yeah. we see her name every year at the Topsfield Fair. She's always taking at least one or two design awards yeah. in the flower building. And quite often we see her name 
connected with the flower show taking awards. Yes, yes, she's always well, she's really involved in the flower show, and she was very disappointed this year that there wasn't a flower show. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I think a lot of people were, were disappointed when that yes. happened. Yeah. Anything else about Noonan's? I mean, you grow it all. It's all there. One-stop shopping. Yeah. Everything is there. I know what else we miss. You make a lot of donations to the town. Yes, we do. We, we try to, we look at ourselves as not only Georgetown, but we make uh, contributions to other, we try to be a regional garden center, but it's every, uh, every day we get, we get requests for donations of the gift certificate or help with a playground or help with something. So we, we try to uh, give back to the, the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I was listening to 104.9 today and I heard an advertisement and you had made a donation to the station and they were using it as a giveaway for yes, yeah. some kind of project that they were yeah. doing there. Yeah, yeah. So every, no matter where you turn. But the hanging baskets in Georgetown, those are yours or were yours last year? Yes, they were. We tried to keep it a little quiet because that's a big uh, part of our business. We supply a, a lot of municipalities. We do the city of Lowell, we do uh, Haverhill, Amesbury, Newburyport, Ipswich. Uh, this year we, we have Gloucester. Um, most of them, we just sell them the hanging baskets and some towns we maintain also. We, last year we maintained Georgetown and uh, we actually made sure those were they were the gorgeous. Yeah, they were really nice. They were gorgeous because I see the trucks that every once in a while with with the gentlemen out there watering. And, and I'd like to say something about that. We we wanted to stimulate that whole process because we were doing other towns, but we weren't doing Georgetown. So we kind of bit the bullet last year and did it ourselves. And we said it was an anonymous donor. <laughs> I didn't want to get myself <laughs> in trouble with some of the other towns. But you know what? A good thing that was is they they put a little. Uh, um, a request in the in the electric light bill and we had enough donations come through to pay for the hanging baskets and man maintain them this year it must have been 200 people that sent money really? money in to say how much they really enjoyed those hanging baskets so yeah. we accomplished what we wanted to do was to get it stimulated because it, it really makes the town look that much nicer when you have those yeah. they, they were just gorgeous yeah so we, we get to see them again this spring. yes yep they're going to be out there so we'll be good. watering at five o'clock in the morning good so. <laughs> well <laughs> i'd see them sometimes at six or seven or so when i'm out walking and i'd see the truck and yeah and that's how i knew yeah because i happened to see the truck water yeah. but you kept it pretty quiet yeah we did yeah we did well guess what it's secrets out, out now i know <laughs> <laughs> well i'd like to say thank you very much for joining us yeah thank it you was very great. much it was great to have you here yeah thanks so when you see those hanging baskets this year, you'll know where they came from. Um, support all of, our, all of our local people, please. And this is Spotlight Georgetown. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.